All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next video here. We're going to talk about biases here, which is pretty cool. Uh, what is a bias? Well, some of us are biased against short lengths. So here's some shorts. Some people like them shorty shorts. Some people like them a little bit longer. So we're talking about bias. We're talking about things you like and maybe dislike. You're biased to sort certain things. Uh, John Cena definitely likes them longer shorts. There he goes right there. He's definitely got the long shorts going on. So what is a bias? It's our preconceived opinion. So this is going to be a lot of vocab in this chapter, in this section here. So you may be biased against a longer video. I apologize in advance, uh, but we got a lot of vocab to rock and roll with. Let's get started here. So let's take a look at generic high school. So they get a bunch of money to spend um, on their school. And they're going to go ahead and ask the football team. The athletic director sends it out to the football team. Uh, how do you want to spend this money? So is this a good sample? We are talking samples last time. So first of all, what's the population? This would be uh, all the students at the school. So all students at generic high school. So we're looking at all how to, you know, we're, we've got the money for their school here. So a GHS. So what is the sample? Well, he is asking what he's asking the football team. So they're asking the football team. Boom. Football team. So I've got this sample. So the idea that we're kind of looking at, is this sample a good indication of the population? So does it represent the population? If it was a good sample, it would, so it would represent it. But in this case, is the football team representing the high school? Probably not. If you ask them how to spend the money, it's probably on sports or sports-related items, maybe a new gym or big bottles of whey protein, and maybe uh, you know the band or the drama department doesn't want that. Maybe the regular kids just want some academic stuff. Uh, so that would be a biased sample. So we're looking at maybe, ooh, that's not a good sample. Awesome. Other things besides samples, check out this survey. So again, it's GHS, love GHS. Uh, maybe they're like this. Would you rather have a state-of-the-art weight room to increase our chances of winning sports or more costumes for Drama Club, which already has a bunch? So is that a fair question? Uh, no, it's not. We call this a leading question. This is written by somebody who definitely wants the weight room. They want the weight room. They're going to kind of downplay that the need for the drama department. So this is a leading question. So... Uh, we, you got to be careful. There's bias everywhere. So in this survey question, there's definitely some bias. So be careful of leading questions. They're trying to point you in the direction they want you to answer. Awesome. How about this? Let's try to fix some of these leading questions here. So here's another leading question. Uh, spring dances are so much fun. Do you want to go to the spring dance? You know, I'm happy just reading it. I'm going to say yes. They sound like so much fun. Uh, how can we fix that? Let's leave out our own personal opinion. So we're going to get rid of this. We don't want to tell them how fun or not fun something is. We just want to say, would you be interested in the spring dance? So, you know, to fix a lean question, you kind of make them boring. You got to take any, uh, any of your preconceived notions out of it. So that would fix the leading question. Just keep it nice and basic, no opinions. Awesome. We're cruising. Uh, here's another survey question that may not give you the results you want. So we're trying to get a good idea of what the sample the people we're talking to are really feeling. So if you ask somebody or a group of people, do you always eat breakfast? Well, this is a tough word, always. You're forcing people to say, uh, oh, guys, I missed a day once, so I got to say no. So be careful of words like always and never. A better way to write this in a lot of survey questions is give people a scale. Like, let them circle. Like, hey, maybe I eat one to two times per week. That's nice. That's a more, indi indi I can't say it, indicative <laughs> of the sample. So, and then they can say maybe it's three to four, or five or more, or I usually don't eat breakfast. But if you say always, you're really pushing people into a corner, and it's going to kind of skew your results. So you end up getting biased results. Man, we are flying. Woo! Okay, now let's write some really stuff down here. So what is a sample bias? That's when our sample does not represent the population. So it's kind of like the bowl of soup representing the pot of soup. If I get a bad bowl of soup, for some reason, it doesn't really represent the whole entire pot of soup. So what can have this sample size if it's too small? So sometimes if you... Only ask, like if you go to school and you only ask three kids, that's too small. Those three kids don't know, uh, don't represent the entire population of the school. So we have to have a, a decent sized sample. Uh, this happens with bias a lot. We exclude people, whether intentionally or unintentionally. You know, we're not getting groups of people in there. Maybe we go to a high school, but we don't ask the seniors what they think. So if you exclude a part or include people who aren't there. So if I'm talking about a school and I include... Uh, people don't go to school there or, you know, uh, people who work somewhere else or something, they're not part of the population, so they can mess up our results. So we try to get samples that represent the population. 
That's the whole goal for this section. What else can happen here? Well, we can have a response bias. So there's a sample bias whoosh, and a response bias. Whoosh, there we go. Uh, the response bias is when we're actually asking these sample people. So we get inaccurate readings from them. So we talked about leading questions. If we write a bad survey question, try to lead them into our answers. Or another one can be social consequences. Uh, so something like this. If I survey people and say, hey, how much do you weigh? Uh, that's kind of personal. Uh, maybe I want to uh, divulge that information. Maybe I drop, you know, leave off 10 pounds or something. Uh, what is your GPA? Maybe I inflate my GPA. Or maybe you ask them, hey, have you ever broken the law? Have you ever tried drugs? Or have you ever stole something? Well, people may not give you the answer. Uh, they may want to give you the answer you want to hear, not the real answer. So there's different kinds of response biases, too, which can kind of mess up our results when we're doing some kind of study here. Awesome. So let's take a look at this, and we'll see if we, got a, if we can get some good samples or bad samples. So let's talk about this airline, Mathair. They want to know if their passenger thinks their plane seats are comfortable. So what's the population? Remember, it's going to be all uh, the passengers on Mathair. So all Mathair, Mathair passengers. So that is our population we're looking at. We're interested. I'm the company. I'm interested in my passengers and their thoughts. So what is the sample? Well, I've got a couple of different sample sizes here I'm going to try out. So they, they're at a mean. They're like, okay, how do we sample this? Well, what if I ask the five tallest people on the plane or five tallest of all my passengers, I sample the five tallest. Is that a good sample or bad sample? Definitely a bad sample. That is a biased sample because tall people usually don't like plain seats. So uh, they're going to say, no, these are terrible. So we don't want to do the five tallest. What if I ask the first 20 people to get on board a plane? That's easy peasy. I just stand by the front door and ask the first 20. Uh, no, it's not random. That's not really a good sample. You know, the first 20 people on a plane, guess what? They're usually rolling in business class or, uh, uh, you know, the elite level up there with uh, the nice seats. So if I'm going to ask the first 20, eh, that's pretty biased sample there too. It's too convenient. It's not random. I need random samples. Oh, there it is. There's the key word right there. Sample three. Randomly select 40 seat numbers and ask the passengers those seat. There we go. That gives everybody a chance to be selected. So the first two, you know, only the tall people, only the first 20. Now everybody on that plane has a good chance of being selected. Well, it has the same chance of being selected. It's random. I may get tall people, short people, first class, economy class. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get a random sample. That is a good sample. So always, always look for that word random. That's the key to this. Random samples usually make good samples. All right. So let's wrap this up with some good question and bad questions. So that was our sample bias. Now let's look at response bias. So again, we're looking at the survey questions or whatever, and we're going to say good question, bad question. So are you excited about the amazing Avengers movie? Is that biased in any way, shape, or form? It is. Why? Because I said amazing. I'm kind of saying, yes, I love Avengers. You should too. That's going to be a little biased there. Ooh, we'll squeeze them in there, there, there. We'll put them there. Uh... I never copy homework. Is that a good question? Well, again, you've got that word never in there. That's not the best thing to do because what if you copied it one time in your life when you were in a hurry and you made a bad choice? You're maybe you want that. I mean, maybe you want to know if you've ever done it. So, but usually you're looking for trends. Like, eh, have you uh, copied less than once? <laughs> Wait, less that's none. Less than uh, once or twice. You know, it's things like that. So maybe I'd rather do a scale here than a yes or no with a never. That's a tough word. How about this? Sometimes if you go in the bathroom, when you leave, they say, uh, please rate your experience, and you got these little smiley faces down here. That's good. You've got this nice scale here where I can say it's, ah, oh, it was pretty good, not so good, maybe sad face, um, things like that. So things with a nice scale are a nice way to, to have a good question here. Awesome. So <clears throat> what happens on these voluntary response things? So let's say this happens all the time with schools here. I send out a survey. I'm going to ask parents, uh, rate the education. So I like this. It's a very simple question. Your overall satisfaction. I've got a scale. I can tell you what I, if, I'm, if I'm liking it or not. So this is good, man. People say, oh, I'm pretty happy there. So that's a good question. But what happens with voluntary response? So if I send out the survey, is everybody going to return the survey? No, I'm not, unless I like really spend the whole year tracking everybody down. So if I sample some people, or get a survey to everybody and I get the results back, who usually responds to this thing? Well, people who typically respond are highly satisfied or whoosh, 
highly dissatisfied. You get the polar opposites. People are angry and people are super happy. Like, oh my gosh, my kid loves it there. Oh my gosh, my kid hates it there. You very rarely get the people in the middle like, eh, the meh people. So you get the polar ends of these things. And I just went to Amazon real quick and I just looked. I don't know why I picked hauls, but I just want to look at reviews. Who leaves reviews on Amazon? Usually really satisfies customers and really dissatisfied. Like, I love hauls. I hate hauls. So that's the type of thing. So it looks like you get a three-star review for hauls, but no one put three stars. That's just the average of the people who loved it and the people who hated it. And it looks like maybe only one person or something here put four stars. So this happens a lot. So be careful that voluntary spots. You get angry people and happy people. Okay, that video is way faster than I thought. That's fantastic. Uh, maybe when you pause, it took a little longer. But uh, take some time with the practice. Good luck on the mastery check. Peace out.